best on, on this rig, you know. And um, I've caught in almost, I think every tournament we've had for squatted bay bass fishing this year, I've caught a halibut over 15 pounds. Not because I wanted a halibut, just because it's, I mean, it just looks amazing underwater. Well, if you don't want those halibut, you can find it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but you catch everything. Is Fat rays eat it. Is I that mean, on the drop? I mean, how? Or you get them on the sink, on the tree. I mean, it, it's just very, very effective. That looks like it's I, I, I know it looks like, oh, that's too much, but it's, it, it really is special. I think they might have some here. Yeah, I've seen some smaller ones here. I've seen the smaller ones here, and especially the company that one of some of the ones I use, the Yum. Um, what they called? This is a called an umbrella, and there's so many companies that make this. I mean, it's just a preference, like I said. But uh, if you're fishing even on the surf, get something like this to try. You know, surf fishing. Yeah, surf fishing. Huh. I mean, I don't know if you can ball of bait. Right yeah. 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 If you see this thing in the water, I mean, it doesn't look like much here, but if you see this thing in the water, I fish in these tournaments when the fish really don't want to bite. They're real lethargic when they, you know, you're fishing a smaller swim bait. They really don't want it. But you'll throw an Alabama rig, and they'll just crush it. And then that usually activates another one. Like, what's going on? And he'll come and and, and eat the other one. <laughs> You know, get them two at a time. You know, if you need more weight, where do you put the weight for? It? Okay, now, see that that that's yeah. that that that's where the see the way I try to balance it out is I'll add the weighted ones down here, and add these the dummy ones yeah. up here. Now you don't have to do dummy ones in salt water, but I just do it just because most of my bites are down here anyway. You know, but you just want that school effect anyway. You know. Yeah. And they make the, this is a resin one, but you can get it weighted also. Okay. But usually when you have three eights, three eights, three eights, all the way across, you've got enough weight anyway. Okay. You know, but um, very effective. Can you use it off the pier? I'm sure it might be a little hard because you're so high up, yeah. but any anywhere around the jetties on the walls, if you're fishing like uh, Newport, Long Beach, or along the shoreline and stuff, sand bass, I'm telling you, love them. We just started fishing them like in 60, 70 feet of water to catch sand bass, and they work amazing. My only problem is I can't get them heavy duty, like thicker gauge. I got to get them like custom made for, for like deep water because I'm now fishing them 60, and I'd love to fish them in 90. Mm. Because, I mean, it's just, it's a school of bait fish, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Any questions? The only thing is, you need to buy a lot more lead heads, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alabama rig, though. Alright. Anything else? Oh, I got you. Yeah, I got you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a little bit to, to the lead head just because I make these things and I kind of develop this particular version. I mean, they've been around with the fancy heads for a long time, but I thought a, a need to do something a little bit better. We didn't talk about it, but you'll notice it's going on that pretty hard. You don't have any glue on that, do you? No. There's no glue on that. See how well you can pull on that? Okay, I'm going to pass this one around. It's got a little bit of an added spinner bait on it. Don't pay attention to that. But I want you to look at the collar. Okay, the collar goes 360 degrees around. Yeah. Most of the ones that all my competitors are selling. You've got little spiky things on it, yeah. and when you put your bait on it, it tears it. It, it tears it, and you got to break out the super glue. Right. So again, you know, this was my eye fish. I wanted something I didn't have to use super glue on. You know, um, I wanted something I could throw in the kelp. The, the traditional triangle lead heads that, you know, they, they would run kind of like this, right? With the hook just sticking up. If you put a, a weed guard on it, that helps a little bit, but not so much. I put the eye tie of that lead head in the front so it'll run a little straighter and it'll flatter so you get more benefit from that weed guard okay and again you know look at that that double collar you're going to save money on plastic you know the plastic people don't like it too much but the uh, you know they're going to stay well, on you're not going to do those ones do like the claw ones where you get them 
and they kind of have that little little hook at the bottom and it tears the bait after a while it just I, I saw those I never even yeah yeah it didn't appeal to me um, you know and you also brought up you know fish in the slide you know this is this is like my setup for fish in the slide it's, uh, it's a 65 grade straight to it the uh, but I also use it when we're patty hopping okay because again this is kind of this is weedless so there's another advantage when they're patty hopping you can go to the front of the boat and make two three casts well, the guy in the bait are waiting, bait tank are waiting to get, finally get up there and finally get some live bait. In the meantime, you've already made two or three casts of the, of the patty, right? So anytime you can get a cast in when nobody else is, that's adding to the possibility of you catching more fish in there, right? So that's just my setup. I use it for the cheetah troll. I use it for patty hopping. Do you, do you guys think that the, the different colors of the, of the uh, the bait you're using in in different weather means anything like you know some people like the like root beer color or motor oil and, and flakes or something and some guys like the straight you know like scampies with something on it or whatever i think people too put too much into color Do you something think so? to be said for some basic colors but at, at some point if you look at the bait tanks, they all look a little bit different, right? yeah. you know, to a certain extent. If you look around in the audience here, we all look a little bit different. We're not the same color as we at the bottom, you know. It's the same thing with the fish that we catch. So, you know, you try a few. You just have to decide, okay, am I going to try to mimic like a crab or am I going to try to mimic a sardine or an anchovy? You know, what is it I want it to, to kind of look like? Uh -huh. Squid. And then you go with that basic coloration. I mean, just take a squid, for example. When you hold the squid in your hand, you're starting to put him on the lead head. He can change color three times in your hand, you know, brown, black, pink, you know, and then he squirts ink and then what do you got, you know? So, you know, they're not always just 100% white, are they? Yeah. So just find a basic and then find something you like to go with that. You know, just make it your own then. The, the flavor of the day. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, it's more about confidence. So you find something, you catch a few fish on it, and then that's your color. I see. You know, I've got... I've got guys that, that all fish the same lake, okay? There's, there's a group of three guys, won't name lakes or people or whatever, but they buy my little satin worms by the thousands, okay? There's three guys, and one of them wants salt, pepper, gold flake, and the other one has to be salt, pepper, purple flake, and the other one's got to be just salt, pepper with no other flake in it, okay? And they all catch a lot of fish at the same lake with their color worm, and they won't touch the other colors because, nope, that's not it, Rob, that, that won't catch fish. Mm -hmm. Okay, you say so, but you know, I know a guy over here who buys just as many as you are. Yeah. You know, and somebody doesn't buy a thousand of one color unless they've got some confidence in it. Yeah. Uh, so. You know. But it's always good to try different baits or have, oh, yeah. you know. Why do you think I make so many different colors? I know. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about football, football head. back out and then you can get it back again. Okay? 
Or just rip it off and go to the Port Chile and buy another one. <laughs> okay. But what I wanted to show you with, with these, again, you know, I'm always looking for a better mousetrap. Hopefully you can see this. It comes across. Oh, I didn't put a trailer on it. Um, yeah, I think the only box is Oh, here we go. Okay, so back up. This, this would be a, a trailer I'd use for the fresh water. It's a, a Yamamoto twin tail. I mean, Berkey makes a lot of stuff similar to it. And all these weird things with the double tail, you know, I'll just cut them down a little bit so I have mostly tail and not so much of the head. You know, the nice thing about this is, you know, 25% off the price already worked, which is pretty nice and low. Um, but what the football head and the hook that I have on here does for me is, every time until right now, when I cast this out and I bring it back, that hook stays laying flat, starts sticking out. I start dragging this, that head usually what's going on here? That had to happen sooner though. Really. That helps you put it together here. See how it stays up? The hook stays pointed up. You know, most jigs did what now I can't even get it to do. Yeah, they'll go on its side, you know, and they'll pretty much stay that way. You know, the only way I can do it is to keep it like that. But if I put this back up, I think I'm going like this again. It's up the top, right? So again, you know, the idea with a better mousetrap, I figured out how to make one just a little bit better, one that's going to stay up, the hook can point up. The fish is going to eat this. Which way are they coming? On the top, for the most part. We've got six colors in this here at Port Chile. Uh, Twelve, actually. Six freshwater colors. Thick salt watercolors, um, and they just catch fish, you know. And they don't cost as much to lose as you know the fancy ones. Like what you've got here, that's probably if you want our website, they don't have to look the script here. That's a six dollar, six dollar fifty cent jig. That's three dollars. Okay, it doesn't hurt as much when you lose three dollars as it does when you lose six dollars. So that's why I came up with this for fishing the rock, and that for fishing the kelp. Can you fish them in others? Yeah, but you know your percentages of losing them increase because you're not using it for the right application. I'm sure he probably he loves them. I'm sure he probably throws those at the breakwater wall too, but he probably also doesn't let them tangle up in the lot. Uh, you know, it's just uh, yeah. I think that's why you got that big old feature bait on there. Is that it? Yeah. The uh, so like I said, you know. Fresh water, salt water, three bucks. You know, the other one we had without the skirts, they've got them here. They're not too bad. The two packs were like six dollars, so it's still like three bucks, but you don't get the skirt. You know, if you do one at a time. Yeah. Do they feed it? Interesting. They're not making any money if they're only for a buck. Because I know what they paid me for. <laughs> yeah? Okay. No. Yeah, if they're going to sell them for a buck, what about it? And then it lose three of them before it hurts. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, we have other things that are coming to the store. Uh, just, I'll just put, I won't show you everything. We've got we've got a, a spinner bait with that same head that comes to the store hopefully in the next month or, or less. We've got underspins with the same type of head. We've got uh, well, oh, we've got a, those of you that remember the old Phoenix vibrator jig for freshwater fishing. I came up with a new version that doesn't infringe on the patent and all that stuff. But I've only got it in five eighths right now. So you want to see what a nine dollar jig looks like? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but that's a nine-dollar jig. Okay, it's different than it's a combination of a jig and a spinnerbait. It's got a blade on the front, and it's got the 
you know, this skirt for a jig. Um, it works really good if you're fishing grass, you know, the dock. It's not so good if you're fishing trees and you probably want to go back to a regular spinner bait. But I've been using this lately without telling too many people, you know, fishing the saltwater dock. You know, it, there's not a lot of trees that I have to worry about. And I get a great vibration out of, out of this blade. Mm. But, you know, again, unfortunately, it's coming to a sports shoe lane near you soon. Um, you don't use weight on it? No, that is weight. This is a 5 -eighth. And that's why I did the 5 -eighth first, because I wanted something heavy enough to fish in salt water. So, you know, the salt, the freshwater guys are a little upset with me, because they want a 3 -eighth first. And I'm like, heck, you guys. Like, just reel it in, and it just vibrates, shakes, wobbles. Mm. It's just awesome. You know, awesome vibration. Well, this is the salt I mean, the fresh water. Yeah, the same thing. Same process. I mean, there's so much overlap between fresh water and salt water, especially when you start talking about the you know, bass and stuff. Retail for nine bucks. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's really you know, I, I make a, like make a fresh, fresh water version that's like seven dollars, you know, for retail. But it's got a much thicker wire. It's got a heavier, you know, component. It's got a fancier paint job. You know, all that stuff's got to be taken into it. Exactly. Uh, we're gonna be carrying that in you know, two sizes. I think three, four, and one. Uh, you know, really soon. Like when the sand bass start spawning and stuff like that, like I'll throw out like a spinner bait. I just throw one out and I'll add like a little loop tail on the back, you know, just a little trailer and just kill. You know, I mean, you know, a little big Alabama rig, you know, you can get away with you know, just a little trailer if you want and not just fish it like so. And you can just have a ball or something like that. I've also hooked some pretty big threshers for some reason on these things. Mm. <laughs>